What did I learn from my cancer journey? Sometimes when we go through hard situations in our lives, we choose to just forget everything and move on. There are actually things that we can learn from our past experiences and carry them on for the future. If you want to learn about the things that I learned from my cancer journey, then stay tuned. Hello people in the world! I'm Hannah and I'm from Hope and Future Bible Devotions desiring to help the young and the young at heart overcome life with the help of the Bible. So if you're new here, then welcome! I have been declared NED of ovarian cancer since January 2020. What did I learn through all of this? I have seven that I have in mind. By the way, these seven lessons are not just things that can be applied only for cancer survivors, but also for other life struggles. I'll be giving some Bible verses or Bible stories to give a biblical perspective. First is to pay attention to your health. Looking great is not the only advantage of exercising and eating right. It also helps energize you and prolong your life. It's also good to have your regular checkups. That includes blood work, regular checking of your blood pressure, and the like. The thing about ovarian cancer is that it's pretty hard to know that it's there at the early stages. It's only in stages 3 and 4 when you actually feel any differences or any pain in your body. Mine was fortunately discovered when I wanted to get consultation for infertility. I went to the doctor because I had trouble getting pregnant and it's been two years that we've been trying. And because of that, the tumor in my body was discovered. If it weren't for the wisdom that I got to go to the doctor, then I wouldn't have known that I did have cancer. I would have been in a different position right now. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. We are entrusted with the body that we have, so let's take care of it. The next one is, don't go through your journey alone. It says in Proverbs 17:17, 17, 17, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. I am surrounded by loved ones who really care about me. First is I have my husband. My husband has been with me in sickness and in health. Ah! There was actually something that I did look forward to for my chemo sessions. That would be breakfast with my husband. We would drop by our favorite breakfast place, drive to the hospital, and eat together as I had my chemo. I also had some of my relatives. They would be there to comfort me. They would be there to listen to my stories, to make me laugh. They were such a great support system. And they also prayed for me every time before they would leave to go home. Also, I had my church family. Oh my goodness. My church family was also great. I remember a time after my chemo or my surgery, there was a group of women from my church who would take turns cooking for me. They knew that I was the primary cook in the house and because of my surgery or chemo, they would know that I can't do the cooking. They would cook for my family and they would bring it over to my house so that I wouldn't have to worry about cooking anymore. All of these people were not just with me during the happy times. They were with me even during adversity. The next one is to make time for rest. I always wanted to be doing something. Being busy can be good, but then if you don't find time to be still, that's where the problem is. Going through surgery and chemo were things that made me just relax. I could not do my usual heavy work. I had to just stay in my room and recover. And it's during those times where I really did get to read a book, video chat with friends. It gave me a time that I could appreciate the things that I did have. Dr. J. Vernon McGee says, Some people just take life as it comes. They pile up their schedule and it would make them look like they are being productive, but they forget to just breathe. There's a passage in the Bible. Matthew 11 verse 28 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Allow yourself to enjoy God's peace and savor God's goodness. The next one is, allow God to direct your plans. It says in Proverbs 19, 21, many plans are in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. One major thing that I learned from this journey was humility. I am a planner. Though that may be a good thing many times, there is a tendency when I would think that everything is all up to me. I had plans for the future, but I did not let God work in them. 
Because of that, I would be left disappointed because I relied on my own strength. But even after the disappointment, I remember learning from it and I came out stronger. That doesn't mean that I don't plan anymore. I mean, I do make plans, but then I pray about them and I try to listen to God's voice through the Holy Spirit. Now, all I really want for my life is to do what God desires. And though I don't exactly know what those desires are yet, I trust that God will reveal them to me in the appropriate time. Next is to prepare for what God will do through you. I came across a devotional that talked about Joshua. Joshua is actually someone who worked alongside Moses. Moses was the leader of the Israelites during that time, but there was Joshua who assisted Moses with the groundwork. He was young, but little did he know that he was being trained to become the next leader among the Israelites. I don't know what God has for me, but I look forward to that plan once it's revealed to me. I see that God is building my patience, my desire to mentor and influence the younger ones, and my trust in Him. May we look at our lives and always look for opportunities to learn from our circumstances. The next one is to know that God will give you strength. In Ephesians 3 verse 16 to 18, it says that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. During the time that Paul the Apostle wrote this book, he was actually addressing it to the Ephesians and he was not asking just for physical strength. He was praying for spiritual strength. Know that when you ask for this from God, He will give it to you. You just have to ask for God to give you strength. Next is to keep the faith. As I found out about my cancer diagnosis, I just finished reading the book of Job. And toward the end of that book, Job was asking questions. He was wondering why he was going through all of these things because he knew that he was faithful to God. And even as he was talking to his friends, even if his wife even told him, just curse your God and die, but he didn't do that. He still remained faithful to God. Yes, he asked questions, but he did not curse God. And in my case, I remember doubting God. I remember questioning. I was confused. And I would say that I fell from the faith. During the time when I was recovering and contemplating on things inside my room, I couldn't find anything else that I would live for. What is the point of life if all you're doing is existing and waiting until you die? So I didn't see anything logical about that. I chose to go back to my faith. Doesn't mean that if you're a good person, you can escape all of the hardships in life. That's not true at all but you are going to be refined as a person. As gold is melted and put in the fire, the impurities are removed. And once it comes out of the fire, it is even more precious than when it first went into the fire. May we have a different perspective on the trials that we go through. Know that these are for your good. Know that God is refining you. God is refining your character. Those are my seven insights that I gained from this cancer journey. And as I said earlier, these are not only for people who went through cancer. It could be for anyone who goes through life struggles. I hope all of this serves as an encouragement to you too. So that's all for today's episode. You can check out these other videos from my channel. Continue to be encouraged. God bless you and see you next time.